cloud. All right, welcome everybody. We got Ashley Sobolewski and Michelle Spires. Ashley is from Jacksonville. Michelle is from Ocala, part of the Ocala crew down there. They really love there. And I've been up to Ashley's place to minister and and down in with Michelle. She's been with us before on a conference we did in Bradenton. And we've done a couple of webinars with her already. So I'm excited. I've been waiting for this this night for a long time and it's just been really something on my heart about honoring our body and most of the most of the people have a problem with that you know I've had my problems too with it but I'm learning and I'm making some changes and and what we're finding is well let's just start with this scripture 1 Corinthians 6 19 through 20 it says or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Verse 20 says, For you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body. Another version says, Honor God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And so what we tend to do is dishonor our body. It's the least considered part of our triune being and I know Michelle is going to probably talk about soul issues and uh, <laughs> a lot of things there and I'm just honored to have both of you here with us tonight because I know both of you are in the health and nutrition dietitian and uh, health and wellness field and and uh, getting our soul right our body right our spirit right and all those things have to come together for us to come into the place where uh, we're governing creation at a higher level. We've not been very effective. In fact, just look what happened today. Uh, Governor of uh, California was, was re-elected for the, the, uh, the overturning, what do they call it, recall. He was, he was, it was like, how does that happen? Where are the, where are the co-creators? Where are the governmental, legislative, and judicial sons? Uh, my passion, my heart, is to cause those legislative and judicial sons to begin to rise up to govern creation, everything in heaven and earth, so that we can begin to deliver creation from the bondage of corruption and bring heaven to earth. Now, this event was planned before I found out what today is. <laughs> today is probably well it is the most holy day of the year Yom Kippur and I won't talk about that a little bit more but I'm gonna get right in with Ashley and Michelle uh, so they can share what's on their heart I gave them liberty to share and offend religious spirits and offend modern-day Pharisees uh, I mean I just think we need to go to some levels some realms where the truth is is released and we've been sugarcoating a lot of things. I'm tired of doing that. And I know, <laughs> I just talked to Michelle. Ashley's nice, Ashley's nice and sweet. And what Michelle is too. But, but it's like, you know, talking to these two people, they'll, they'll lay the truth on you. And it's good. And some makes you think. Uh, they're both thought-provoking. Whatever comes out of their mouth is going to cause you to think a different way. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that's what we're looking at today. So let's get started. Welcome, everybody. We have quite a few people signing in and coming on. And so the reason I went to a Zoom webinar is we got hacked and a lot of things got nasty last week. So we're going to this where the people and the attendees don't have a voice so much. I can, I can move anybody to a presenter at any time. If you would like to have something you would like to share at the end, we'll give you some time to that. You can also type in the chat box uh, any comments, questions, revelations that you have, and we'll share those as we go along. So I'm going to try to monitor that. And so whoever, Ashley, Michelle, whoever wants to go first, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just ready to hear what comes out of <laughs> uh, this meeting tonight. So I'm excited. <laughs> Good to have you guys. Yeah, thanks so much for the invite. Um, I, <clears throat> I've known, actually, I think I've known Ashley, I think I've known you a bit longer than I've known Terry. And uh, you know, we always, between the two of you, I always enjoy our conversations. They're, they're really powerful. So <clears throat> yeah, I'm, ex I'm uh, looking forward to see what <laughs> comes out of this too. 
and this is a totally different setup. I'm, I'm used to seeing everybody's face. So this is a little different and cool. Yeah, as I was saying earlier, earlier, I'm just really honored to be on the show and um, I'm really grateful to meet Michelle because that means I was meeting people like you, Terry, like um, Michelle was really um, a gate um, through Yeshua for me to um, meet um, a lot of people. So, it, you know, it was just all divine timing and Michelle, I give her credit for introducing me and really getting me into the oil. So um, that's really been a key part of the body for me. So I just want to give you kudos for that. So, um, but yeah, really excited to be here. It's kind of funny around uh, the Ocala bunch. We don't go, what would Jesus say anymore? <laughs> what would Michelle say? Yeah, yeah. So it's, we just have a great time when we get together down there with, with all the crew. <laughs> yeah, I, I've heard about this. They have yet to do that in front of me, Ashley. I, that's probably because I just blurted out instead of waiting for them to ask. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Love that's it. a good thing. Or, or I get the side eye from Dave and he's like, what are you about to say? <laughs> he yeah, knows it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you were good. fun. Did you, do you, um, I mean, how do you, where do you choose to start? What do you? Well, I just want to give you enough time and Ashley enough time and then I'll come in at the end. I got some things about Yom Kippur and it, it's, it's so key for tonight what we're talking about that we need to it's talk you know most holy day it's about repentance it's about uh the day of the verdict so it's like this can be an actual court case while we're doing this you can do your own court case we're not going to lead you through an official court case but anything you find that that might trigger your spirit or god touch you in a way that hey i need to repent repentance is not just saying i'm sorry I define repentance, teshuva, from the Hebrew perspective. It's, it's a return to our primordial first estate. And as long as we're locked in this human, uh, humanity-like lifestyle, we're, we're not coming to the God-like, uh, as he is so in this world, uh, measure of the fullness of Christ that he's actually promised to us. So we need this day. We need you know the the, the uh, yom kippur is not just one day we can repent you know we can do that any day of the week but uh it's especially today i'll go into some more things i found today on yom kippur from different sources it's just amazing and uh, so if you hear something i need to change i need to repent i need to i need to return to my primordial first estate, which by the way is Adam before the fall, maybe even before that. And so uh, just do that in your own, conduct your own little court case as we go. And well, I think Michelle will be to. responsible for the language piece that we did the conscious language. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I literally, um, there's certain things I say. And when I say, it, I literally think of Michelle as I'm saying them. So, um, and, it, and it changes you for the better, because as I was mentioning earlier, um, we're always creating, right? You know, we're creating, we're always co-creating. And so, well, sometimes we're co-creating, sometimes we're creating things in our own strength. So um, sometimes we're creating good stuff and sometimes we're creating not so good stuff. And those are just opportunities. Um, but one thing I was just going to mention is um, in this past week, um, I think it's a message I'm supposed to bring is I had a dream that I had, um, I was on oxygen, but I was just on partial oxygen. Not only was I just on partial oxygen, but I was forgetting to put my oxygen uh, mask on. So um, really some of the message, I'm sure it's multidimensional. And there's many messages that could come from that, but one really important piece of um, taking care of the body and taking care of all parts of ourselves is that self-care, you know, because a lot of things that we've been told is the complete opposite, right? We're told that we're supposed to take care of, every, especially as moms, that we're supposed to take care of everyone else around us. And that's what we do, but it's the opposite order. Um, we love thy neighbor as thyself. It's as thyself first. So um, what we do can come from that place of self-love when we are taking care of ourselves, right? Um, so um, you notice I didn't need a full oxygen mask and I you know, had it on sometimes, but that was, that's, that's my um, thing that I wanna bring forward is although I'm taking care of myself some of the time, there's um, more that I can do. I, cho I choose more. Um, I'm sure there's a better way to say that, Michelle, but um, yeah, I, I, choose, I choose and I am love and everything comes out of that, right? So we can look at our behaviors, you know, we can focus on our behaviors and our eating habits, 
But the fact is those are just behaviors and those behaviors are just showing us what's in our heart. So if we have any type of food issue, whether it's, you know, overeating, undereating, whatever it looks like, it's just a reflection of the relationship that we have with ourselves. So um, it's just kind of like a little temperature gauge um, or a little barometer saying, okay, you know, how, you know, how are things on the inside? So um, instead of, you know, instead of judging ourselves or be like, oh, you know, I really need to go on a diet or do this or do that. I mean, instead, if we can just really look at the root of the heart issue, then that's when change and transformation happens. Yep. Very cool. <clears throat> Very cool. So if I, if I jump in from the beginning, I think, I think this will be super fun. Ashley, we could probably just tag team off each other. And so this will be, we'll, we'll just take um, them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> So um, the first thing, you know, Terry, you were talking about governing, governing creation in different um, and, and our bodies, but really our bodies are going to show us how we are, how effective we are in governing creation. Mm -hmm. So good. I just heard that come in uh, as you were talking and I was like, oh, yep. Wow. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Cool. So, so any, any of the, um, if, you have something showing up in your body, and I'm going to tie this back into Yom Kippur in a second. If you have something showing up in your body that um, is a dis-ease, it's just where I've believed something less than who Papa really created me to be. So bad. Like, so every single time I can find where I'm believing some, some sort of lie, something that I've made up, and as soon as I touch that and address it, my body comes back into alignment. And so it's fun for me to play too. Ashley's talking about the different cravings and uh, you know different ways we eat. All of that is a signal as well. If I'm if I'm if it's the salty, crunchy food that I'm going for, I can trace that back and find what's creating that. The sweet is something different. Fried is something different. There are a lot of different ways that we can honor our bodies. And if I feel drawn to something that is other than honoring, I'll say it that way, I can, I can find, I can use that as a segue to find my belief system. Baba mm -hmm. made it, he actually made it really, really easy guys. It's like, it's so cool. Um, and so this is where it ties back into Yom Kippur. If I believed a lie, all I really, another way to say what Terry said about the word repent is really just to turn. Mm -hmm. So that is the ultimate, that's really all I require doing. And as soon as I turn, like, no, drop the, and, and I'll, Terry, I'll pick on you for half a second. So, okay. So uh, all of y'all, I know, I know you're listening. Just say the words, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll say, I apologize. I apologize. Apologize. Which one? What do, can you feel the difference in your body between the two words? Can you, Ashley? I, I only have, yeah. I have you two to look at. Okay, cool. So what, what's the difference that you feel? You, can you, can you language it? I feel a little more guilty saying, I'm sorry. Bingo. Bingo. Mm -hmm. And most of the, most of the time it'll sit in your stomach or on your chest or maybe in your shoulders. Mm. And so literally anything that follows those two words, I am, I am is the name of God. Mm. And anything I say after I am is a decree over my own life and my being. So if I say, I'm sorry, I'm literally calling myself a sorry being. Mm. Versus I apologize is an action step. Oh, I see what happened here. I apologize. I'm moving forward. I, da, 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 da. I, so an example is I apologize for being late and I commit to being five minutes early from now on. Just as a simple example, but it takes that, that guilt. If you can feel it in your body, it's actually changing your body chemistry. Mm -hmm. And it will sit in your system and it will have you crave different things like Ashley's talking about. Now, the really, a, not the really cool, a really cool part is that you can address it both from the emotional component and from a physical component. So if I'm aware, um, 
that certain cravings or, or certain food choices produce certain results in my body on an emotional component. For example, dairy has a tendency to feed the conversations of I can't and it's hard. So if I'm craving dairy, I know that somewhere in my system, I'm running, I can't and it's hard about something about life. But that's all that's really a lie, guys. If Papa gave it to you to do, he also gave you the tools to do it. It's all going to be about trust at that point. So conversely, if I'm aware that I feel I can't and it's hard about life in general, I can be really on purpose about my dairy consumption and pull that out. And most likely that I can't and it's hard conversation will, will dissipate. <laughs> Along with all of the other physical components that come with reducing dairy. Because dairy, Ashley, tell us, tell me, I mean, I, I choose to hear from you. What's, what's dairy do in the body? Yeah, um, sluggish digestion, acne for people. Um, it's really inflammatory. Yeah, absolutely. It can be inflammatory for people. Um, it can be phlegm forming, you know, especially in the day and age that we're in with um, certain type of disease or illnesses, um, that can, you know, especially with breathing and that type of stuff. So yeah. yeah, and not to mention the way it's, um, you know, what they do to the cows to create that much milk and, and what they go through. <clears throat> wow. There was a uh, lady on the Courtrooms of Heaven group that wanted me to do a court case for her. All her problems were, were I just sensed there was a red flag there. All her problems were related to her diet. So I go, you know, I have this red flag and I go to her Facebook page and she has all this picture of fast food and I can't stop, you know, and I was, well, <laughs> if you keep declaring you can't stop, you're, you're not going to be able to stop. And so I, I told her, I said, look, everything you want me to go to your courts for isn't, isn't, I'm not going to do courts for you because all you need to do is change your diet and you're going to change your life. And she didn't yep. like that answer. She wanted. <laughs> so, I, I don't think we're friends on Facebook anymore. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, but. Hey, uh, sometimes the truth is, sometimes it stings a little. And yet, whenever I can stay present and feel, just really observe and see what's going on, there's a huge blessing. And mm -hmm. usually the times when it stings, and I'm most apt to run away, you know, before now, now I'm aware that the more it stings, it's like, Ooh, jump in and find out what's the stingy part. Cause there's, there's a little gold nugget in there that if, when I stay present, I can find it. And that it may seem painful in the moment. And it may even seem really, really small. It may seem like a minute nuance. And yet when I take it and I embrace it and really explore the depth of it, most times it's some of the littlest things that actually change the trajectory of everything in my world. It's awesome. I like to talk about it as being even the negative things that happen in, in my life. I go, God, I'm inquiring of you. Search me, O God. Psalms 139, 23 and 24 is my favorite prayer. See if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So I begin to look at negative situations as what is God's eternal purpose in me experiencing what I'm experiencing. And every time it finds something, either my body or my soul or whatever is out of alignment and through a quick court case or just repentance, I'm able to turn back to uh, the proper protocol that'll enhance my body or soul or, or whatever's going on in my life. No, they'll be one in the same. It'll, it'll do both at the same time. Okay. <laughs> so, so fun. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It make it makes, cause you can actually, I've had to go through a lot of stuff in the last seven, eight years, come away with me and living in my van era where, where it was constantly 
inquire of the Lord. It was constantly seven years worth of, of uh, letting go, of, of losing my life for his sake so that I might find a total abandonment to everything I've learned up until this point and still going through a lot of those. So it's like, I don't, I, I, go ahead. I was just going to say full trust. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's just a really important part of sonship is the whole um, change of perspective where we go from the slave mentality, from victim, to realizing who we are. Because, you know, as a victim, we want to hold on to that hurt. Um, we want to be mad at that other person. We want to judge. And we want to hold on to all that stuff because and because we, we naturally want to um, say and do things that are in alignment with who we are. So when we believe that, that's what we want to do. But as we change or upgrade, then that's when our frequency changes. And as our heart changes, our words change because that, you know, we want to say and do, and that's when we um, nourish our body and treat our body well, because that's our new belief that we are worthy of that. So once again, it's just going to be a reflection of what's going on on the inside. And as we understand and remember our identity and grow into um, being sons and, and kings and royalty, then that's all going to line up because we naturally want to do and say things that reflect who we are. Yeah. Don't get me going on frequency. Now we'll just go off on frequency. If we go <laughs> well, come there. on. We're all playing on the frequency. Do, everything we eat, the music we listen to, everything, the walls that are around you have a frequency. Every, a rock can cry out. You know, it's just like everything is frequency. And I've been studying that for a long time. And how, you know, both of you do essential oils, how essential oils will have to get your connections uh, so people can connect with you guys and uh, uh, how that enhances your diet, enhances your, or either lowers your, your frequency. 68 to 72 is the average frequency of the human body. If you decrease that by eating processed foods or listening to wrong music or or, you know, a lot of things can go in that. You're re uh, reducing your thoughts. frequency. Yeah, your thoughts. Yep. Wow, yeah. You're reducing your frequency. You're lowering your body's frequency. There, and then you don't, you're opening the door up to the enemy legally, and you're, you're reducing the frequency that can bring in sickness. Yeah, and I think one big part of that, and Michelle's really good at helping people with this, is the whole boundary issue. Because you know we that needs to come out of the place of self care and it's okay to give but once again we also need to have healthy boundaries and that is just so important for our physical and our emotional all parts of our health so I didn't know if you want to mention anything else about that Michelle oh um, yeah I mean so healthy boundaries are are extremely important but and before I even go to that I mean we're really we operate much like batteries. Like we're, there's a, there's a, a give and a take process. We're, we're conduits. It's good. Yeah. So, so if I am receiving, receiving, receiving and feeling, so many times people go into this, this hyper receive mode. Yes. There can be selfishness and other things involved. And many times it's about, well, I'm not good enough to share things. That's also a component of that conversation that that can or part of that lifestyle when people have that going on so you know what i have found is that even when i share just the smallest of things that if i notice something that i'm now i'm sowing a blessing and so i'll reap a blessing but mm -hmm. i'm also you know if i you know if i think about like a pipe and there's a lot going in and nothing coming out the other end, well, eventually nothing new can come in. Mm. So I have to be able to give some things out that I get, some new ahas from Papa or new awareness, you know, whatever that might be, I have to be able to share those and sow them into other people. And that'll make, it'll do two, two things, probably more, two that I'm going to talk about right now. It makes room for more things to come in but also it has, um, have you guys heard the, the fastest way to learn something is to teach it? Mm. <laughs> so the more I share it, I actually get it deeper and deeper. And the more I talk about it, I'll get new, new aha moments with it. And I'm gonna go, yeah, like you got this piece and let's just add just this little more, just a little bit more on there. And 
man, it, again, it may seem like a little bit and yet it will ripple. It'll send a, a ripple effect through our entire being, our, our, all our bodies are, I just know how far you get into that, Terry, but <laughs> all our bodies, our bio field, what, all the things that you may be interested in talking about. And it'll also have an effect on anything that we're connected with, even if it's other than us, like our, like I have family that lives in other parts of the country and in other countries. Well, by me doing it, they're getting the blessing of whatever I do. Anything that I have um, that, that is on my heart to, you know, that, that I'm connected with in that way, it, it sends a blessing to that as well. So, um, so we, we both, we have to be able to give and receive. And then also, you know, if, if we put out too much energy without receiving, then, then there's nothing left on that end either. So, and all of this really, um, like Ashley was saying, healthy boundaries are, are vital to have this process happen smoothly for us. I mean, and really it can be as simple as I love my healthy boundaries. Guess what? I may have zero idea what that means as I start saying it. You don't have to, but what you're doing is you're putting something new in place. You're putting a new frequency in place and the rest of you will catch up. And yeah. I guarantee you, if you start calling it in, Holy Spirit is going to go, okay, do, 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 do. These are the things you got to do. Well, and I, just thought, I just thought like, you know, set your boundaries. You're honoring your body. Yes. And guess yes. what happens? The more you honor your body, the more you're attracting that glory realm. Mm. Like, ah, yeah. The you more know. you're becoming as he is our way in this world. So uh, that's awesome. Yeah. I love the, what you're talking about. Very cool. And some other on, on a physical note, because I do love both, both the speaking it and something to do in the natural, like changing our food or whatever, something that goes along really well with healthy boundaries is actually dry brushing. Mm, that's so that, a, good that's one. a little, a little different than what, what we had originally put on deck for tonight. And it's really powerful. I, if y'all are interested, you can connect with me. I made a little video. It's other than professional. It's something I did for a friend of mine couple friends of mine and it's me on the camera explaining it. So I'm happy to, or you can Google it, but dry brushing is really helpful and powerful to honor your body. It supports, um, circulation, uh, lymphatic health. Um, it, yeah, it's the nervous system, all sorts of things all at the same time. Funny enough, I have some lemon oil right here and that kind of makes me think that would be a good combination right there. <laughs> Speaking of lymphatic, yep. right? Yep. Yep. Very nice. Yeah. yeah, that is so good. Um, one other thing I was just, um, that reminded me of is as we learn to govern and, um, you know, take our place of position and, um, overshadow, we, we learn and we do things and we overcome so that way we can release it. Right. Because as, um, our friend Timothy mentions, you know, what we allow into our hearts, we allow into the city and it's, it's the good flow too. So whatever we um, heal in our hearts and whatever we overcome, then we also can have the authority to release that to the city or to the church or what, or the region. So it's really crucial as part um, of, as part of the restoration of all things is that we learn, first of all, to just start with ourselves in that place. And then, um, you know, what's freely been given to us, we can freely pass on to others. Awesome. That's so true. You can't, I was just speaking about courtrooms of heaven. You can't expect to, to, to go into governing or the courts is over issues regarding a nation. If you hadn't dealt with yourself first, because what's going to happen, you're going to open up the door for, for, I don't like the word attack, but you'll just open the door legally for some not so wonderful things to happen. And so the first area we always talk about is our identity and our authority and dealing with our own stuff first and foremost before we even try to govern or do courtrooms of heaven for anything beyond our own, uh, our own life. Yeah. So Very good. Cool. Let's talk about obesity. <laughs> <laughs> you know, take it away, Ashley. Go there. <laughs> I, you know, I travel a lot, and and the more I see and watch videos, the more I see obese people. I'm not 
slim and trim. I have a little fat on me. I need to lose 20 pounds. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a pandemic in the church and in the world that, uh, you know, we don't honor our bodies. Everything's surrounding food, right? Wherever we go, we have to eat and have to go out to lunch with the host and, uh, you know, do all this and that. And it's, it's, uh, it's wonderful to do that. It's a place of honor. They want to honor us and we want to honor them. I don't want to say no, but I still want to set my boundaries and, and uh, be careful what I, what I do eat. Uh, sometimes I have problems with that. I'm just going to be honest. I, I, I struggle with that sometimes. But let's just talk about that, some obesity. Uh, you know, you mentioned a lot, Michelle, about relationships and, and how male and female side of your relationship can have negative effects. And I love those conversations. And, and I want to hear, what, Ashley, what you think about, you know, that. Because it just, to me, it what I've seen, it just opens the gateway for sickness, disease, infirmity, and, and keeping us away from our very best and, and highest potential Yahweh has for us. And, and I want to address that because I think, I think we need to consider uh, repenting, change, return, and honor our bodies more than ever right now. Yeah, um, that's a big topic. But um, what first comes to mind is the fact that it's never about the weight, it's never about the food, and it just really comes down to the heart issue. So it's like, you know, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? So in this case, it's just, um, you know, we each are, um, are meant to be a certain size. There's a size that we will naturally go to when we are in unity with, you know, with um, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, when we are in oneness, and when we're not having those, when we get out, when we are overeating or, you know, mindlessly eating that's we're not in oneness right we've stepped out we're not remembering who we are so we've stepped out of that and i mean you can think about it you know you're like i don't even realize what i just did you are literally not in the moment and you have you have stepped out from remembering so um you know unity you know oneness remembering and identity those are really key there um and i i've noticed a lot um well we know that 95 percent of diets fail so i think a big thing is um a lot of, um, you know, there's been a big obesity epidemic and we think that, you know, people say that dieting is the answer, but that's really not the case. <laughs> yeah. 95% of diets fail. So is it everyone's failing or is it really the system that's failing? Mm. Um, because actually when we um, restrict, um, and tell someone that they can't have something, especially when it's us deciding for someone else, what they should or shouldn't have, then what do they want to eat? The thing that we've told them not to eat. So fortunately, there's been a big change um, in the profession of dietitians and healthcare. Not everyone's caught on, but um, we no longer focus on the weight. Um, we are more um, healthy eating at every size because we know that's really not the issue. So um, instead of guilting and shaming them for that, we focus on the eating and the patterns. And once again, just as we're all talking about here, what's going on in the heart and how can we um, meet that person at both ends, their identity and figure out um, the food issues they have, the beliefs they have, where did those start? You know, when they were a child, did a parent restrict food for them and not give them um, what they, what their body needed at the time? Uh, was it used as a punishment? Was it used as a reward? So I find that when we can really kind of trace back um, and oftentimes um, weight imbalances also um, are directly related to trauma as well. Once again, it's those emotions, those feelings um, that are really just kind of trapped in the body. So um, yeah, there's definitely um, an issue going on. And once again, um, you know, we have the answer through Yahweh, <laughs> so. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, so if I, my take on that, um, <laughs> many of the words that uh, they sound the same, uh, they're very much connected. So for example, weight, W-E-I-G-H-T, and weight, W-A-I-T, are very strongly connected. Hmm. I find that people who carry, there are a couple of different ways that it can happen. One of the things that, that shows up often is they are waiting on something to move forward. And so their body will carry excess weight whether it's waiting to be good enough, like I mentioned before, or waiting for permission from somewhere. 
you know, I, I choose to know like it, that it, every time that's going to be between you and Papa, you, you and Holy Spirit, you and Yeshua, like every time there's no, if you're looking to have permission from a person, you're going to be an error. Just saying anybody I've done that. Yep. Anybody? Mm -hmm. Repenting. Yep. <laughs> I'm turning. I'm turning. I mean, right I now. Thank you. <laughs> hey, I mean, that's how some of my coaching sessions go. Sometimes I, just before I say something, I hear what I, what I'm, what's about to come out of my mouth and I repent for it right before I say it to my, my client. So be it like the, I count that as a blessing because, pop, you know, they're coming to me because they're a mirror for me. They're showing me what I've got going on. And I'm like, yes, thank you. And yeah, sometimes it stings a little for me too. And I'm the one saying it, oops, you know, so it's just, mm -hmm. just go with it. So that's weight. Um, or sometimes um, if I, weight can also be about, um, like if I feel responsible for other people, again, this can be a boundaries thing as well. And I'm carrying the weight of caring for all these people. Mm. Here's the deal. Even if I am caring for someone else, the challenge shows up when I'm doing it in my own strength. That's when the challenge shows up. When I actually jump in and actually trust that I am completely more than I imagine possible divinely supported, things, I mean, this can be money, this can be help from other people. I'm thinking of like those who might be caregivers. I, for some reason that keeps coming up. So I'll just share that, like being caregivers for, maybe that's from you, Ashley, too. I choose to know, but um, from our conversation or texting before. But... I'm writing notes, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but if, if I feel that caring for someone is all my job, it's all, I've got to do all this work. If that's the language or the thoughts I'm having, it will feel that way to me. And I will literally, even if someone shows up and offers to help, I will literally push them off. No, it's okay. I got it. Any of the moms out there done that? Any of the dads out there done that? Hmm. It's okay. I got it. I have 42,000 other things going on and I can do this one too. All the while I've been saying, I've been complaining about not having help or not being supported. Who's doing that? If it's showing up in my life, I'm the one doing it. I generated it. So for me, I mean, like you said, Ashley, we, we are always co-creating. And you said sometimes we're creating out of our human strength. For me, that's still co-creating. Papa still gave me the tools. He still, whatever I put my attention on, whatever I speak out of my mouth, whatever as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So this is what I'm dwelling on and what I'm focusing on. It will show up for me, not because I'm a bad kid, not because I did it wrong. None of those things. Simply, Papa put the tools in place and I am the one remembering how to use them. If mm. I use them wacky, I'm going to get a wacky result. It's like, it's no, no, no punishment involved. It's just the, the results of, of what I put in. Yeah. It's amazing. I had a revelation this week that was having to do with waiting. And I talk a lot about how the church age was different, where we were totally consumed with waiting, contending, tearing, and pressing in. Uh, and kingdom age is stepping <laughs> in, right? And all of a sudden, I'm laying in bed, and I have this, this, this revelation, this encounter with, with the Spirit. It's like, that kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When is that supposed to happen? Any time we step into it. We're waiting. I realized how I was waiting for that to happen. Like what's supposed to happen for heaven and earth to manifest. So I decided I have to become that co-creator. Now a lot of my governing uh, declarations and speaking of those things that are not as though they were, it becomes heaven on earth it comes a praise and a thanksgiving that uh, thank you lord that heaven and heaven is manifesting in my life in my finances and it goes the list goes on and on and on and i believe it's so exciting because 
I'm no longer waiting, but I'm stepping into heaven and earth manifesting. Heaven and earth is manifesting in my finances. Heaven and earth is manifesting in my photography business, in my fishing. And I've been doing crazy good fishing. I'm fishing and eating very well. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle asked me one day, well, you're fishing. Are you catching too? And I said, well, not that much. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but I released it to God. I said, I've got to change the way I'm doing things. I'm I'm speaking negative things over fishing and over all you know, just a pastime that I love doing. Actually gonna start a business with that. But it's it's uh I was waiting for something to happen where I'd catch more fish and all of a sudden I just released it to God. Uh, the scripture that came to mind was uh God you daily load me with your benefits. Mm-hmm. So I started catching fish. <laughs> and now I can go out. What it took me four hours to do, I can catch in two hours and come home, have the rest of the day for for whatever. Ashley, it, was, it sounds like we're due for a trip to the panhandle to yeah, uh, go get yeah, some good fish dinner. Yeah, That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm upgrading all my equipment so I can. Um, when's that happening? I'm just yeah. <laughs> Whenever you get here. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true how, how simple that is and how complicated we make things with our words. Yeah. We're either going to co-create darkness all around us or we're going to co-create light. And we have to find, we have to discern uh, better. And I think it's just pay attention to what, what you're saying, what comes out of your mouth. A lot of times can just be a tradition that makes the power of God of no effect. And, and we keep saying things we learn over the, the generations and generations of, of non-effectiveness. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. 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 So I, I, oh, Ashley, you have something? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, um, two things real quick. So just one of those, those phrases, I, I noticed one today when you, when someone comes and does some work at your house or whatever, or, you know, on your car or whatever, and you say, okay, what's the damage today? what? <laughs> what? I almost said it today just because it was just a, and I, I was like, right before it came out of my mouth, I was like, oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, thanks. So I just started, I, I immediately, my version of repenting in that moment was just going into, wow, Papa, you know, thank you that I have all, all the funds I require and more to do what I'm doing here and all the things that you you're asking me to do, you've already provided for all of it. Um, so there's that. And then the, um, the church age was about waiting and the people still in the church are the ones with the extra weight. I mean, that's just cool. Mm -hmm. That's a cool aha moment. So opportunity right there. Yep. <laughs> to overcome, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just coming up with so many um, cool signs for like um, sign ideas, you know, um, you know how it says like it's happy hour somewhere. It, it's already been restored somewhere, you know, <laughs> um, but you know, in all seriousness, it's just a matter of remembering and stepping into what was, what we, who we truly are. Um, and a lot of times that's really just um, stuff that's been passed down in the bloodline where, where we are is a culmination of those who came before us and who they surrounded themselves with, the things that they put in their body, the words they spoke, um, the lack of boundaries they had, or the um, adherence or the way they learned to create healthy boundaries. So we are just a culmination, each of us, of, of that. And But the good news is we are not victims of that. Um, once, as we learn, we are responsible and then we become powerful co-creators who can change it. And that's empowering. Instead, instead of being stuck in it, you know, and being, um, oh no, you know, once we identify it, we can also change it. So that's the empowering part of it. Yeah. Hey, Terry, where, where's this recording going? Uh, probably put it on my uh, YouTube channel and I can share it with you guys. What do you think? Mm, okay. Is this Say it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Point to see. Or it can go to the archive. <laughs> we, yeah, we can. We, we, can, we no. can bleep this part out for everybody. I'm just kidding. No, go um, ahead. Be three. Be, be Michelle. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm good with that. I'm just wondering, uh, like, is it going to get you kicked off YouTube or what's going to happen? Yeah, I'm not afraid um, of offending the modern day Pharisees. <laughs> love it. That's, Got it. You're all good.
I'll cover for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it's on your YouTube channel anyway. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm totally kidding. Um, so doo -doo 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 -doo. where was I going to go with this? Um, So a lot of times weight too has to do with um, thyroid health and thyroid is going to show where we've been holding on to anger and resentment, mm -hmm. the way that our thyroid functions. So that's, that's the first thing I choose to share. The second thing that I'd like to share, and this is do your own homework please do your own homework. Um, okay. So everybody's heard of genetics, right? Okay. So, um, I have a big, a big challenge for you in this, in that, well, maybe for some of you, I don't know, Ashley and Terry, you've probably heard me talk something about this before, but, um, what we, all right, my body is really, it's frequency too. And my body is really just a, holographic display of my spirit and my soul. Okay. I've, I've been playing with this enough. Papa showed me this a while ago. Y'all can take it, leave it, whatever you choose to do with it. Have fun. This is where I'm at with it right now until Papa shows me something different. Okay. So, so my, my body is just a holographic display of my soul and my <clears throat> spirit combined. So what people have dubbed genetics is not, it, it's different than what has been talked about up till now. It's actually emotional genetics. Mm -hmm. The belief systems that get passed down, and if there's some sort of dis-ease in the body, it's because that belief system has been passed down as well. A perspective on life that got passed down. A bitterness towards life or an inability to enjoy the sweetness of life that will affect the pancreas. I'm going to stop it there because if I go past that, then I start saying disease names and that causes, can cause challenges. But y'all can, if you would like to know what the pancreas does, go look it up for yourself. Use your <laughs> imagination, right? Imagination. Yes. Or, or ask Papa, he'll answer you. <laughs> he'll answer you. Okay. So, so if something is showing up that seems generational or genetic, it's a belief system that's passed down. The second, third, whatever number I'm on, the next thing I'll offer you after that is that you, not only do you have the power to change it, but I also believe that you, in union with Papa, before you came to this three-dimensional place, picked the bloodline that you came into on purpose just so you could heal that mm. your body is just showing some of the things that you picked to heal in your bloodline mm. so to me that is hugely empowering i i was already made with the tools i it's already on deck for me and if I hate the, the dis-ease or the challenges that have shown up, I cannot find the way to heal them because hate does not heal anything. Love is what transforms everything. So when I bring love, remember love, light, life, truth, and God are all interchangeable. Okay. So when I, by loving something, I mean that I'm bringing love, I'm bringing God, I'm bringing truth, I'm bringing life to whatever it is. And then I can find the blessing in it and restore health, both in the soul and in the physical body. Mm -hmm. And which will have all of that come into alignment with my spirit and my purpose, period right this second i'm gonna close these blinds and flick on the light i'll be right back yeah that's so good that's cool okay. yeah well let me go into some things about yom kippur because it's highly significant everything we're talking about like i said earlier i don't know if it's recorded but but uh we didn't plan this thing 
knowing that it was Yom Kippur starting at uh, sundown tonight and going till uh, uh, sunset tomorrow, uh, 15th through 16th. So Yom Kippur is the holiest day of the year. Just some of the notes I've had. Uh, when we are closest to God and to the essence of our souls. How about that? The essence of our souls. Yom Kippur means the Day of Atonement. It's the day Moses came down from Mount Sinai. It's also the day that the priests go into the Holy of Holies and repent for, for Hebrew. Now, we can do that any day when we factor in Jesus Christ. Uh, and they say that the scripture they use is for on this day he will forgive you to purify you that you be cleansed from all your sins before God. So as we've been th talking, I hope that you've been uh, uh, doing your own court case so that the Lord can forgive you and you taking a step through a portal of what the mystics call, let me get to that in a minute, uh, Yom Kippur is a day of self-examination. So I want to encourage you to search me, O God, pray that prayer and watch what he begins to show you through dreams and visions, through what others are sharing with you, what, what your thoughts are, what your words are coming out of your mouth, your actions and your mindsets. Pay attention, do a self-examination. I love that prayer, Psalm 139, 23 and 24. Uh, it is a day for every person to stop everything in life and to take the time to think about the important things that we usually don't have time to think of during our everyday life. I found this interesting and related to what we're doing here if you're engaging the courts. It is the day of the verdict. Wow. So it's like, I'm going to read something to you that I found from Doobie Sobo, who was connected with Kim Clement back in, in the day uh, before he passed. But but we'll sh I'll share that in a minute. But just a couple more notes on Yom Kippur and we'll move on. Uh, it's the day they, they, they complete their, their prayer of repentance. May you be signed and sealed in the book of life. And may you sins, he will forgive you, purify you, that you may cleanse. We already talked about that. The mystics say something a little different. I love their input and, and what, what they say. This is a powerful cosmic window. A portal beginning tonight through tomorrow, known as Yom Kippur, the most powerful day that allows us to connect to our highest perfected self and to elevate to a flawless reality. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Wow. Where are you reading that one from? Uh, I'll have to send you the links to it. It's, it's okay. From... I was going to say, I have a call right after this one that I, that I could yeah. share that, and they would be like, yeah. whoa. It is a gift to all of humanity in which any negative energy that we have created, that we have created through our actions in this year, in this lifetime, in our previous generations can be cleansed as we go into generational bloodline iniquities. It is an opportunity for redemption and to connect to a perfect world beyond the illusionary realm where all pain and suffering is erased. <laughs> oh, come on, these guys. Yeah. Yeah, tap into the highest energy available to you through this this uh, cosmic portal that uh, that uh, is available to us just by stepping in. I want to share one more thing. I think I put it on. Uh, you guys can talk for a minute while I find that. And I think that's just wonderful. It's highly significant. Uh, when I began to hang out with David Herzog, he did all his meetings on. Uh, the Hebrew festivals. He said, by doing so, you not only have that cosmic open portal, but you have a seasonal portal and you have a geographical portal. That's why he lived in Sedona. He and his wife, family lived in Sedona. You had a geographical open portal there uh, and you have a seasonal portal. So today is highly significant for us in what we're talking about and uh, in making some changes and moving towards repentance. So uh, while I look up that, uh, you guys want to share something, I want to try to find this thing. Yeah, the judgment used to make me kind of nervous, you know, from upbringing, hearing about judgment. And, you know, as time goes on, I'm just realizing that it's it's more 
it's the fire and it's being in his flame and, it, and it's refining. So it, it's nothing to be afraid of. If anything, it's actually um, a glorious thing. Um, it's that, you know, glory to glory, getting through those, those overcoming moments and, um, um, you know, turning towards him, having that stuff burned off from us. Um, it's freeing, right? It makes us lighter. So, um, and it's part, it's part of the restoration process. Absolutely. So, uh, through so background, doesn't make me nervous anymore. Doesn't trigger, doesn't trigger <laughs> me like it used to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know yeah. where I put that thing. <laughs> but I had it earlier. There's a duck in here, Ashley. Yeah. <laughs> what, what does the duck mean, right? It's I'm sorry. <laughs> I can I can find it and forward to anybody who wants to just message me. And it's really prayer they make. All of Israel gathers in a synagogue all day today on the Yom Kippur and prays this prayer. Uh, I saw that earlier. I might have saved it on my phone. Did you? Was that what you were going to read? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's where it is. Let me look at it. Yeah, I did see it. Okay. Here it is. Thank you. That okay. got it. Okay. Good. <laughs> I found it. Nicely uh, done, guys. Yeah. It's teamwork. Okay. Here we go. It's a whole thing. What we've been talking about: all vows, uh, prohibitions, oaths, consecrations, restrictions, interdictions, and any other equivalent expression of vows which I may vow swear dedicate for sacred use or which i may proscribe for myself or for others from this yom kippur until the next yom kippur which comes up come comes to us for good from now we have regret them all so there's repentance right there all shall be hereby absolved remitted canceled declared null and void not in force or in effect let our vows not be considered vows let our self-imposed prohibitions not be considered prohibitions and let our oaths now be considered not be considered oaths and may he may the entire congregation of the children of israel as well as the proselyte who dwells among them be forgiven for all the people acted unwittingly Pardon, I beseech you, the wrongdoing of this people in keeping with the greatness of your kindness and as your, you have forgiven this people uh, from Egypt until now. And there it was stated, and the Lord said, I have pardoned in accordance with your words. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has granted us life, sustained us, and enabled us to reach this occasion and that's the end amen and so there's there's our court case finished with the verdict of not guilty he's pardoned us for the things we've been dealing with and talking about tonight i just think that was so great he transcribed that it's usually done in aramaic and in hebrew and every synagogue in the world on the same day yom kippur amen Amen. Very cool. Hmm. Any final thoughts you guys have? Uh, you, we can continue. Yeah, um, I was just, um, I was looking up, um, you know, some scriptures and praying and, you know, thinking about things before we got the call over the past week or so. And um, one the word that just really stood out was glory. And, you know, and you mentioned that, of course, a few times this evening. And, th and that's really what it is, is, um, being a living sacrifice and glorify him in what we do, because each of us has an individual expression that only we can carry out. No one can do things exactly the way I can do or the way that you can do Terry or you, Michelle. So it's just being that unique expression and, um, and it's, and it's doing it in its fullness. It's, it's that full glorification of him shining through us. So that's really the process is us um, being him becoming flesh in the world and um you know sharing him through us and glorifying him in all we do that's my final word for the evening <laughs> awesome thank you ashley yeah very nice yeah i i totally agree it's um to add to the 
the component of, you know, each of a, one of us has our own expression. Well, and, and so I had this, I just don't know when this showed up for me, but I, but the, uh, I saw a diamond, like seeing a diamond and the, each, the diamond has different facets and this facet over here, it, it touches all the pieces around it, but not the facet on, you know, not the, the side, you know, the other side and the other side. So, so it takes all of us really being who we are and living it to the fullest to, to have everyone raise up. So good. So even, even just those little nudges, those little things, just take, take a little step. Just trust, even if something small, bring your trust up a little bit, bring your courage up a little bit. And the more, even just doing a little bit, it makes room for more. Because you're, mm-hmm. you're making a new choice consciously instead of I'm, I'm not going to do that. Or, I don't know. Well, just, and, and have, have your language match up. Like I, in the context of tonight, I love my healthy body. Whatever it takes for me to have a healthy body will begin to come up for me. Mm-hmm. It could be in the form of nutrition. It could be in the form of dealing with the soul stuff. It, whatever it is, Papa's going to bring it up because you spoke it into existence. Like you started th- the trajectory for you. So have like, bring your language on deck. Um, I, I love my healthy body. I love having my healthy boundaries. I, I love hearing Papa speak through or Yahweh speak through whatever your languaging is. I love hearing Yahweh speak through me. My words bless everyone I come in contact with. Like have, have those pieces be set their tra- your trajectory in such a way that it's, it's like, you're setting it up here. It's kind of like a, you know, when, when they like in the movies or whatever, it's the only time I've seen it is in a movie, but they shoot like the little dark gun thing and it goes up high up in the mountain and then it like sucks them up. Do that with your language. That's in essence, that's what we're doing. And it will, it will create almost this, this vacuum for you to become what you speak. Mm. By the way, all your words are already doing this. So pay attention to them and have it, have it come into alignment so that you, you're being, you already are who Papa called you to be, who he created you to be. He already created you in perfection. All this other stuff is is just a bunch of lies or nonsense or whatever junk that got passed down. So that means all I got to do is shake them off. And it gets super easy. So, and your languaging can have that shake off process be really, really challenging and slow and sluggish and duke it out. Or it can be fast and easy. Up to you. Awesome. Thanks, guys. That was awesome. You're I just welcome. Want to share one, one last dream that I had the other night. I don't know if so I've shared it with you, Michelle. I may have. Uh, but I was seated watching this uh, these people, a group, a very large group of people, but they were all seated at a, a white banqueting table, kind of like you have at a conference with a white tablecloth. Uh, but each person had their own individual computer. They were just focused on the computer. And up above on the wall, there was this green-like substance that was like a veil. And I could stick my hand through it, and what I assumed was the truth. And, and the Lord began to speak to me about that, and he said, Terry, there is no veil. There's the... Let's see, how did he say that? The, the, the veil an illusion is, is, is what you said to an me. An illusion uh, based on your false perceptions. Mm. Yep. Based that on was me false, cheersing, but my... The mom. only veil that holds you back from fulfilling 100% as he is so we in this world is omnipotence, omniscience, and om, omnipotency is a result of our... Uh, false perceptions Mm. and so you know Ephesians 4 says uh, until we come to the the full measure of Christ 
Jesus was the firstborn of many, so I'm in line there somewhere. You are too. So we have to move out of our false perceptions uh, by asking the Lord, search me, O God, know my heart, try me, put me on trial. I want to sit in the judgment chamber with the Lord. And we think that's bad. Oh, he's going to strike me with a lightning bolt or it's going to be gloom and doom. Yeah, but it's it's his goodness that leads us to restoration. Yes. And see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So I want to encourage everybody to, to make that prayer. Pay attention to what happens tonight. From this point forward, set your uh, your goals, set your heart to to having the Creator uh, uh, examine you, examine yourself, get in there with Him, and pay attention to your dreams tonight, because this is a great, great opportunity to 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 not only seal your year, but begin to the process of what I call transfiguration. And I've been I've been looking at the 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 story of the Mount of Transfiguration outside of the realm of time in God's glory. I can stand on that Mount of Transfiguration with the Lord and be transfigured with Him that I become that exact representation of what He uh, uh, was demonstrating for us on the Mount of Transfiguration. The final word there was, hear my son, know my son. Only do what I see my Father do. So I just want to encourage everyone to... to uh, whosoever will, what Karina Pataki, our friend, always says, whosoever will engage with this will we'll see some great results and see change and transformation transfiguration metamorphosis and uh so i want to thank you guys ashley michelle thank you so much for thank joining you. me tonight and uh yeah. i'm going to put this out i want you to put your links in there where people can contact you if you want to you can add it in the chat box but uh most of the people there's only a few people left now but but uh Put it in there, it won't show up on the recording, but once I put the recording out there, uh, I'd love to have you share your connections. Michelle at inspiringconsciousliving.com. Michelle Spires, uh, her, that's your email. Yes. Michelle at inspiringconsciousliving.com. Ashley is Ashley at Nutrition Ignition. I love that dot net i love that ashley ignition nutrition exists ah, i can't even say it <laughs> it's a tongue twister um yeah like all my last names usually are so <laughs> yeah ashley yeah. at nutrition ignition dot net there we go got it out yeah and here's yeah if anyone chooses facebook here's here's facebook as well um okay if yeah, still playing on themselves. facebook all right I really only uh, message there. I, I post very little, so um, and you can use it as a tool to reach out to me. Yeah, such a good time tonight. I appreciate yeah, you guys honor you. Thanks for being my yeah. friend. It's been awesome over the years getting to know you guys and hanging out with you. And we'll see you guys yeah. soon. You thank awesome. you. The honor. Very nice. Yes. 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 You're thank welcome, you. and thank you. Yeah. yeah thank you. See you Bye soon. Guys. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thanks. Right. Bye. Okay, thank you. Okay.